Hey everyone, welcome to this series on hand calculations. Today we are going to be discussing which formalism we should actually use, either the PDD formalism or the TMR formalism. So what actually is the answer to that question? Which formalism should we use? Well, the short answer is that it doesn't really matter because both of the formulas should give the same exact solution. With that being said, one formalism might make your life easier than another. For example, if you were in a situation where your SSD was 100, it makes sense to use the PDD formalism here because the PDD was measured at 100 centimeter SSD. Therefore, it's very straightforward to apply the PDD formalism. On the other hand, if you're calculating dose to the isocenter, then it would make sense to use the TMR formalism because the TMR is always measured at isocenter. And so it just makes sense and it's very straightforward to apply the TMR formalism in the case where you're calculating the dose at a point uh, located at the isocenter. So to illustrate that it doesn't truly matter, I'd like to go over an example problem here. So please take a minute to pause your video and read through this problem statement. So we're first going to start with the PDD formalism. And I brought back the PDD dose calculation equation, which is shown here. Uh, just to kind of, you know, refresh your memories a little bit. And I, of course, write down some of the parameters we are given. We're given the dose, the depth, the collimator, and blocked field sizes at the isocenter, and also that the SSD is 110 centimeters. And if we just stare at that equation for a little bit, you should notice that we need to calculate the field size at the surface, which is R in this equation. You're given RC and the block field size at the isocenter. So to calculate the field size at the surface, we just need to take into account beam divergence, which is just going to be taking our source to surface distance of 110 and dividing it by the source to isocenter distance of 100 and multiplying it by the blocked field size. Remember, the PDD uses the blocked field size. And if we do that calculation, we get a blocked field size at the surface of the phantom of 11 centimeters. And I also write down that RD0, which is what we use for the phantom scatter factor, is just going to be equal to the uh, field size at the surface because that's the field size that was used to define the normalization point of the PDD for this beam. And also by looking carefully at that equation, you can see that the PDD value that we need is for a SSD of 110 centimeters, which we do not have tabulated. We have a PDD that is tabulated at 100 centimeters. So we actually need to calculate what this PDD at 110 centimeters is. And we can do that using the Maynard F factor. So this is the tabulated PDD that you can see for 100 centimeters. The PDD value for a field size of 11 and depth 10 is going to be 67.3. So we can just apply the Maynard F factor to that value and the main F factor is listed there. If you don't recall the equation for that, please go review it before continuing. But applying that F factor is gonna give a new PDD value at 110 centimeters of 0.6824. So that's what we will use in our calculation. Now that we have the correct PDD value, we can move on and get our scatter factors. So using uh, the appropriate collimator and blocked field sizes, we get the scatter factors that are highlighted here. And then we can write everything down in equation form, which is what you are going to see here on the right. Um, I just insert all of the correct values in that top line, and then I plug everything in down in the bottom line. And when you multiply everything out, you get an MU setting of 346. And I want to talk a little bit about the inverse square correction here. So here you are taking the dose at the source to calibration distance and uh, correcting it to the new SSD plus D max. So you're moving from the SSD of 100 plus D max, which is 101.5, to the new SSD plus D max, which is 111.5. And yeah, that gives us an MU setting of 346. And now we will work through the same exact problem using the TMR formalism. So now we can jump right in. Uh, first, I'll write down the dose calculation equation for the TMR formalism. Uh, just take a look at it here. This includes all of the factors. This is in its most general case. I, once again, I'm going to bring back the factors that are given to us in the problem statement. And if you really stare at the equation there, you see we need to calculate the field size at the depth of the calculation. In the PDD formalism, we needed it at the surface. Uh, but in the TMR formalism, we actually need it at the depth of calculation. So using beam divergence uh, with the SSD equal to 110 and depth of uh, 10. That gives us a source to calculation distance of 120, and we divide it by the source to isocenter distance and multiply it by the blocked field size. TMR uses the blocked field size, uh, 
and that gives us a block field size at the calculation depth of 12 centimeters. And just a reminder, that's the field size we use for the TMR and also the phantom scatter factor. And so now we can write down our equation. So this is the equation for the monitor unit calculation. Uh, on the top is just the general equation, including all the factors we need. And on the bottom, I just substitute in the correct values for the field sizes, uh, both for the TMR and phantom scatter factors and for the collimator scatter factor. So the collimator scatter factor just uses that field size that's defined at the isocenter, which is 15 by 15. And now we can go to the beam data. So this is the TMR table. We find our field size of 12 by 12 at a depth of 10. The TMR value is 0.7874. We can do the same for the collimator and phantom scatter factors. For collimator, it's 15, which is the same as the PDD formalism. And then for the phantom scatter, it's uh, 12 because it's at the depth of the calculation point. And then we can plug everything into the equation. And lo and behold, we get the same monitor unit setting of 346 monitor units. But I want to point out here, too, that the inverse square factor is now from the source to calibration distance to the source to calculation distance. So it's not the SSD plus D max in this case. It's the SSD plus the depth of calculation, which is different from the PDD formalism. But lo and behold, you can see that it gives the same exact value. So it really shows that it doesn't truly matter. And thank you for watching this video.